So at this point in the build, um, if you've come along this far, we have entered the home stretch. Um, you know, hopefully you've you've given your crown some time to dry on the stem. I'm going to give it one final check before I proceed on to the next step. Make sure everything's fitting appropriately. And it is looking good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the crown. And then now begins the least favorite part of watch building for me, and that's cleaning out the case. But it is a, uh, a necessary step, however dull one. It's just laborious. Um, but it, it's part of making the watch look perfect, so it is an important step. So what you're going to do is remove the um, movement holder. And I'm going to grab it right. There's a great pinch point right here above where the, the crown would be would, would be going, or the crown stem would go normally. Lift it straight out. I'm going to hold the watch face down because remember we've got the the crown tube blocking the uh, dial from coming out completely. So you're going to going to want to hold it and turn it around as to not scratch it and roll it out nice and easy. I'm going to put the watch dial on a movement holder. And at this point you want to give the dial a good look over. You want to get out your um, your rubber blower that would have been included in the Casker toolkit. And just look over the dial for any dust. If you see any grimes or or grime <laughs> grimes <laughs> any grime or marks on the hands from where maybe you accidentally touched it or touched it with another tool you can get those uh you know q-tip thingies i recommended or standard q-tip and just you know I'm, I'm looking at the hands with my um optics and if I see any little marks, I'm just rubbing them, you know, rubbing them off. And, you know, you can take as much time as you want being perfect, which certainly, you know, I like to do. I like to make my work look good. I'm not going to spend as much time now as I normally would because I just want to get on to the next step of the training video, but I just wanted to give you an idea, idea of what, what I would be doing at this phase. I'd be careful about rubbing on the dial, although you could lightly brush some dust or whatever away. And really it's the job of your, your blower to get it nice and clean. Then becomes the hard part, and that's cleaning out the inside of the case. So, obviously, you can use your hand blower to blow out dust, and that does work. It takes a little bit longer, and certainly if you see any smudges inside the case on the glass from where maybe you accidentally touched it or Maybe there's just a mark from, you know, handling handling the case. You could use a lint-free uh, microfiber cloth to wipe it inside and outside. And you just want to hold that case in the light in different angles and just look for dust, look for anything, you know, look for anything inside. Um, lint just gets everywhere, dust gets everywhere. Clean it out to the best of your ability. And I think uh, one useful tool, two useful tools, one, compressed air is your friend. Um, be careful about compressed air. Sometimes it'll shoot out liquid. Um, 
and if you're too close to the object that you are blowing off, uh, that liquid will get in the case and then it just creates a new problem for you of wiping out that liquid and then starting over again. But if you hold it at a distance, that uh, compressed air can will will blow out a lot more um, a lot more dust a lot quicker than um, your your hand blower will. Uh, you know the hand blower is great for hitting up the dial and getting everything off the dial, and it's not blowing so strong that it's going to like blow your hands off the dial. I wouldn't try to use compressed air on the dial. Um, another useful tool I have found is this Bergeon dial pen, crystal pen, the part number 7971. You can get it from Casker and basically you use this, I'm not going to do it because the inside of my dial is relatively clean, but if you had marks you can rub this pen inside there and it, it tends to pick up everything and, and not leave lint trails behind. It's It's a really it's a little bit pricey, but it's it's a really good tool. And then the back end of the tool has a um, a brush that you just engage here, and you can just wipe out dust and things with this brush end. So I recommend this. I mean, it's not part of our economy kit, and if you're making a lot of watches, or maybe you're cleaning out watches that um, you know you own, this has been you know one of my most used tools is the Bergeon number 7971 and you can even buy replaceable tips that um, are convex and concave based on the type of sapphire you're working with so it's just a great little tool to work with but in any case you're cleaning out the dial at this point to the best of your ability and um, on the next step uh, I'm going to assume your case is clean and you know really all you're doing is I, I post it up the dial on the, the movement holder. Once I'm satisfied that this is cleaned out well, then kind of the action I perform, either while it's on the dial holder or in my hand, is um, give everything a good blow off, to get all the stuff out of it. Um, and then I will roll it right on to the dial and you could do this while you're holding the dial and then once you have it in place check it over see if you see anything in there um, and I do Um, this is where that special movement holder from Bergeon comes in handy because you can just set it there and um, perch the case on top of the dial and just give it looks from all angles and once you're satisfied the case is cleaned out your hands look good um, then I roll it I roll everything over like so don't know what happened to my tweezers there they are and once I have it rolled over I know that my case is cleaned out I know that I can move my uh, put my movement holder back in place and let's go to the next step